Hey, what's up? How's it going? It's Rob, and welcome to Leaf Curious. So the news has recently rolled out that once again beavers are a native species here in England. This essentially means that beavers are legally protected and they're free to disperse across the country. And DEFRA has announced that there will be some planned reintroductions to the UK, although these will take a little bit of time, there'll be lots of research and conversations, but it's going to be a good thing. And essentially over the next decade you're going to see a lot more beavers spreading out across the country, which means there's going to be a lot more crossovers with people. And in today's video, I want to go over exactly what the beaver does within the landscape, where and when we'll see them, some general information toward the public, and then we'll cover some of the more specific issues related to the people living closest to them. All in all, I want to give you the full picture, explain to you why beavers are awesome and therefore why it's essential that we can coexist. Beavers are about a metre long and they have brown dense fur and they weigh around 20 kilograms with huge orange teeth which they use to eat plants and only plants. Beavers are commonly mistaken as fish eaters. This is not the case. They also use these teeth to gnaw through twigs, branches and even trees to construct their dams. They fundamentally build dams to expand their habitat, creating larger and deeper areas of water in which they can access food and construct their lodge, which is where they nurse their young, sleep and hide from predators. Amongst one another, beavers are very social animals and they typically mate for life. But this dam building is precisely why we are getting excited about the beavers. There's no animal quite like them in the UK currently, or for that matter, the world. They're going to have such a widespread impact, which will have many benefits and will present some issues. So imagine if you've got a relatively narrow and sometimes meandering, but quite often a linear river with a few trees either side of it and patches of dry woodland. If you employ a couple of beavers, they'll get to work straight away felling trees and gathering sticks and twigs to build dams. And what happens is that narrow river begins to widen out in places into the adjacent woodlands and grasslands, which benefits a whole host of wildlife from tiny water voles all the way up to the barn owls, which are, well, going to eat the water voles. A common misconception is that beaver dams actually prevent the movement of fish. Misconceived for the sheer fact that beavers and salmon have coexisted and evolved together long before humans influenced their natural systems. On the salmon fishing rivers in Norway, there are many active beaver populations and upon the smaller streams salmon can and have been found spawning. Globally there's just a lack of evidence to suggest that beavers have negative impacts to fish populations. So beavers are exactly what the British countryside needs, turning out riparian areas from relatively dry lifeless woodlands and grasslands to really rich and juicy boggy areas where all life can thrive. So let's be clear, beavers for biodiversity are absolutely a good thing. But this video is really about coexisting with beavers. So do the beavers offer any benefits to people? Well, firstly, for wildlife enthusiasts, it's amazing. They're awesome to see. You get that thrill seeing them in the wild. And rural areas benefit massively through ecotourism. People coming to see the beavers. They need feeding, they need places to stay. They want guided tours. And as for the more practical benefits, these include reduced flood risk, improved water quality and storage, which is all due to beavers slowing the flow of water. You see, historically, humans straighten water watercourses to ensure the produce could be transported much faster, but this faster flow of water ultimately leads to flooding further downstream in our towns and villages. With a number of beavers along that same river course, that water can be held and slowed during periods of heavy rainfall, and beaver ponds have greatly benefited farms during sustained periods of drought. So what's the current status of beavers in the UK, and where can we expect to see them in the future? Well there's actually around a thousand beavers living in Scotland, and in England and Wales you'll find them in Iceland isolated populations living in places like Devon, Derbyshire and Cheshire and that's only naming a few. Now many of the current beaver populations in the UK vary in size and a lot of them are enclosed but the place where you're most likely to spot wild beavers in England is on the River Otter and currently in Scotland although protected land owners have permission to shoot and translocate problem animals. A lot of local charities and organisations are responsible for translocating the beavers before they are shot but a lot of the beavers do end up getting shot and it should be understood that shooting the beavers is a last resort and in many cases it is completely unnecessary as you'll find out later in the video. So before we get into the specific industries, people and places that are going to be most affected by beavers, I just want to go over some general information for everyone. Always remember that beavers are not going to hurt you even though they have pretty large yellow teeth. They're not interested in us, they're probably a little scared of us so it's important to maintain space. It's also important to be quiet. 
I mean, if you want to see them and you're making loads of noise, they're just going to swim the other way. If you have a dog that likes to go in the water, it's important to be aware that they might chase the beavers and potentially harm them. And look, I love dogs, but unless you can recall your dog back, it might be a good idea to keep them on a lead. Now, if you want to see the beavers and learn a lot more about them, one of the best ways of doing this is taking a wildlife tour. There's plenty of them around. You know, I really think that we can all enjoy the beavers. We just have to be respectful about it. All right, so what about the people who are living closest to the beavers? Well, the issues are exactly the same for everyone, and they relate to flooding, tree filling, and general disturbance caused by the beaver activities. But the biggest and most common issue that arises between beavers and people is flooding. And you know, this can mean more than just a nuisance of having your back garden flooded. Sometimes this can have financial implications of having a section of your farm flooded or another business like a golf course or you know, anything that really shouldn't be wet. Now, although there are a few general methods of mitigation, it's important to understand that each plot of land is different. The landowner's views and needs will be different, the land use and its makeup will be different. That's why it's the job of ecologists and landscape managers to investigate the very best and most suited forms of mitigation for the flooding. In Alberta, Canada, one form of beaver flood mitigation has been used to some success, and it's known as a pond leveler. These are essentially big long tubes that ensure a steady flow of water from the upstream side to the downstream side. These are set up using strong wired housing at either end to ensure the beavers can't get at them. The water is then able to pass through beneath the dams at a steady rate, alleviating the flooding while still maintaining the beaver dam and the pond that it's created. They take a little bit of time and resources to set up, but once they're up, they've been considered very effective. And also, the same principle can be applied using much smaller piping for smaller areas of flooding at a fraction of the cost. Another concern is block drainage, as beavers are drawn to the sound of flowing water, and land drains flowing into streams sound all too attractive. Culvert guards have been designed to prevent beavers gaining access to these drains and in some cases the better ones actually dissipate the sound of the water upwards. As much of the UK land is farmed, it may be a consideration for landowners to repurpose the land use in the areas nearest the streams. Many countries in Europe, such as Germany, allow a 20 metre buffer zone either side of the rivers to accommodate any beaver flooding. Beavers felling and gnawing the bark from trees can also be another problem for landowners. Heavy metal guards can be used to protect certain trees from beaver damage and on some beaver ponds landowners in Canada actually fell the trees they want down and bring them to the edges of the ponds. The beavers then come and take these trees to construct their lodges, dams, instead of felling other trees. I mean how great is that? Man and beaver working together peacefully. Now that's what I call coexistence. You know, if I owned a farm that had beavers on it, I would capitalise on this. I would dedicate that whole area to beavers and to wildlife. I would come up with some kind of wildlife tool, you know, create access so that, so that people can come and see them. I'd create some kind of accommodation and really let people see the benefits, as well as being a farmer, using that water for my farm. Leave Curious Rewilding Projects coming soon. You know, it may seem a little bit backwards, but the UK's advantage is that we're currently behind a lot of other countries with respect to rewilding and managing the land at a landscape scale for biodiversity. You know, we don't have to reinvent the wheel when it comes to figuring out ways to not only coexist with beavers and other wild animals, but to also enjoy the many benefits that they have to offer. For so long the UK has been without beavers and many other keystone species. We've been conserving our environments to a permanent state and we know that the natural world is ever shifting. It wants to change and evolve in order to thrive. And at the heart of that will be the beaver. I'd like to say that you can now support Leave Curious over on Patreon. You'll not only gain early access to videos but also exclusive content. Becoming a patron will help me put more time into creating these videos. I understand that you may not be able to commit to this every month, so instead it would be awesome if you could like, comment and subscribe to the channel. As always, thank you so very much for watching Leave Curious. This is the back and this is the front. Cool, right? <laughs>